Um, I'm very excited that you all are here. It's a humbling experience to me. Um, I'm from Kingdom Ministries. You can go to www.kingdomministries.faith or you can look on Facebook, Kingdom Ministries um, at Cape Town Faith. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to teach you something about healing and at the end of the day, you will be healing. It's not rocket science. Jesus said we must all do it, so that's something we should going to do. So we visit churches, we teach churches, those who allow us, <laughs> and um, we go to townships, um, and everywhere where God calls us. Now, I've been invited to Tanzania. I'm going to go to an orphanage. I'm going to go heal there, and I'm also going to go teach there. So for administrational purposes, there's a box there at the back. If you'd like to bless or donate, you're very welcome to. So I'm just going to give you some background about myself. I came from a very loving Christian home. I did not know the difference between a relationship and religion. It was two, it's two different things, but I didn't know the difference. And somewhere along the line, things went sour for me. I, I, wanted the, I want God of the Bible. I wanted God. And later in my life, I started church hopping from one church to another church to try and find God of the Bible. But I was just completely lost. I didn't know where to find God. And one day I was in my kitchen and I, I was singing a song on my, my phone. I think it was Shout to the Lord. And I felt this amazing glory come over me. And the grace of God just... I can't even explain it when I had to stand up. When I wanted to stand up, I had to go on my knees because I couldn't stand anymore. And since that day, it's been crazy. It's been crazy. I remember the one day I was out in Bayside, a shopping mall, and um, God told me to pray for this Indian lady. But she was a real Indian. She's from India. And uh, I'd say to her, Hi. And she says, hi. And I said, sorry, do you have any pain? And she says, yes, I've got pain in my hips. So I say, "Uh, can I pray for you? She says, sure. I said, well, I'm a Christian. She says, I'm Hindu. She says, I like Jesus. I love Jesus. I don't like the Christians. I say, well, okay. (laughs) I'm just going to pray for you anyway. And I prayed for her. And she said, I'm healed. She said, the pain is gone. I said, really? She said, yes. Okay, um, I said, well, I'll give you my number. <laughs> I wrote down my number. I said, if the pain's back, <laughs> call me. <laughs> and the next day she called me, and I thought, oh, goodness. <laughs> she says, no, I'm healed. I'm still healed. She says, I'm bring my husband. You must pray for him. And that's just how it started. Now, since that day, there has been literally thousands and thousands of miracles, healing, supernatural stuff just happening. You can't explain it. Really, it's... Uh, it's I, I, can't, I can't explain it. I tried to walk in the same power as the apostles and the, the disciples did. Because Jesus is still the same. So, Hebrews says Jesus is still the same. So, why, why do we say things have changed? Things are exactly the same as they were. So, the, the apostles and disciples, they didn't sit in a building and have meetings about conferences about this or that, you know. They didn't have cake and coffee. Where they went out, there were miracles and there were healings and people repented and they, they turned to God in a dramatic way. I don't have any problem with church. I love church. It's just when you go out, after you've been to church, what happens? I believe the church is meant for for the lost to get to and not to entertain the believers. You know, we should be out there. We should, we should, yes, we should have fellowship, but we need to get the lost into the church. So what I want to do today is I want to take you back to the walk of the first disciples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for Matthew 9, verse 16. What I need to do first is I want to renew your mind. Okay. So Matthew 9 verse 16 says, No man puts a new patch on an old garment, 
so as not to weaken that garment and make the whole larger. Neither, neither do they pour new wine into worn-out skins so as to rend the skins and spill the wine. And the wine runs out and the skins are ruined. But they pour new wine into new skins and both of them are well preserved. And everybody's wondering, what is this verse about? You know, people are saying, it's the church leadership. It's the whole structure. You know, if we get this right, then this will fall into place. And we get this right, then it's a fivefold ministry and the elders and but if that was the case, if it was a church leadership, the Pharisees would have been perfect, you know. But Jesus said, no, you hypocrites, you're all going to hell. He said, you white, white painted tombs, you're full of iniquity and hypocrisy. So Jesus said, this is not it. So if I read this the right way, it's the renewing of the mind. Now that's what I want to do today. I want to give you a new wineskin so that the information that I give you will not spill and ruin. Because you can't, you can't go with an old wine skin and put new wine in. It's like, it's going to frustrate you because you're going to walk around with a patch here and a patch there and sewer patch on here and it's going gonna, it's gonna to spill out, it's going to be ruined. So it's going to frustrate you because you still be in your religion but you can't heal and then you think, well, am I doing something wrong? No, you just need to renew your mind. Okay, so I'm going to refer to some scriptures. You're welcome to write them down. The first one is Mark 11, verse 24. Okay. Jesus says, Therefore I say to you, any, anything you pray for and ask, believe that you've received it, and it will be done for you. Now, Jesus is talking about faith, because faith grows in your heart. And the more time you spend with God, the more your faith will grow, because faith goes against human understanding. There's no way you can understand it. It goes against medical science. It goes against um, the natural. You won't be able to understand. I've got videos on Facebook, on, sorry, on YouTube, that I was, um, there was a man who didn't believe in God, and I grew his fingers this, this long. And uh, just to show him that there is God. And, uh, and people go, oh, that's nonsense. You know, that can't be true. It's fine. I was there myself because I didn't have the faith. But it's the faith that will take you to another, another level where you can walk in this faith to heal the sick, you know, raise the dead and cast out demons. So Jesus says it's about faith. And that's actually all there is. Yesterday I had a call, my friend, um, I, I prayed for him, I've never seen him, but he's in Ellisbrass, and he had a sciatic nerve, and he had to go for operation, and I was, he got my number from somewhere, and he called me, and he said, would you pray for me? I said, yes, I'll pray for you, and I prayed for him, and he's healed, and so he's going, and he's healing people now, and um, he calls me yesterday, and he says, you know, he's healed this lady, but like her hips aren't fixed yet, it's an elderly lady, he, he, he he prayed for her back and her back were fixed, but like a hip is, is still hurting. So I said, okay, and I speak to the lady, and she says, um, you know, it's the way she walks. And I, and I thought, uh, you know, sometimes we need to be sort of like a detective. So I said, okay, Louis, just put up her feet and put her legs, because the one leg is shorter than the other. He said, yes, that's right. He said, it's about five centimeters. I say, well, there you go. Tell the leg to grow. Mm. I said, tell the leg to grow. He says, okay, leg to grow. He says, nothing happening. I say, wait for it. He says, <gasps> we just hear this. <laughs> and everybody is, it's, it's chaos. It's chaos. So, and what else? He says, well, the knee isn't in place. It's at a, I said, tell the knee to go in place. He says, knee go in place. <gasps> you know, it defines, it, it, it you can't explain it. There's no medical science that can explain the faith of God. You, you can't go, you, you can't reason with it. Okay. So Jesus said, he says, what you ask for, if you have faith, you receive it. So it does not matter what you believe. If I heal you, it doesn't even matter if you believe. Because Lazarus was dead. It's hard to believe when you're dead. Okay. And Jesus never told anybody, oh, your sin is too big or, you know, it's like, 
uh, I'm not going to forgive you now. I'm not, I'm not going to heal you now because you need to work on your, on your character. Because Jesus healed everybody. Anybody that came in, in touch with him, he healed everybody. I mean, the power was just coming from him. So Jesus healed everybody. Now, when your word is integrated with the word, something happens. It's like a, it's like a nuclear weapon. Something happens when, because the word, this is the word of God, and your word goes together with the word, which is Jesus, in your heart, things will happen. So we build this faith by hearing God's word. And I can promise you by the end of the seminar, you'll believe. If you haven't believed yet, you, you'll believe at the end of the seminar. So I want to talk about the word of God. Now, if, if you go to John 1, it says, the word was in the beginning, and that very word was with God, and God was that word. Okay, so speaking about Jesus. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw the glory like that of the firstborn of the Father, full of grace and truth. Am I going too quickly? <laughs> okay, then you get Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. Okay, in Revelation 1 verse 2, who bore record of the word of God and of the testimonies of Jesus Christ and all the things he said. So this is the word of God. This is Jesus, right? Then you also get the word of God. Psalm 147 verse 15, he sent forth his commandment and his word runs swiftly. This is not Jesus running. This is his word. He's speaking about the word of God. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and judgment to Israel. This one I love. Matthew 8, verse 8. The centurion comes to Jesus and says, My servant is sick. And Jesus says, I will go and heal him. And the centurion says, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but if you say the word, my servant will be healed. That's the faith. That's the word. So if you go back, I'm just going to, I know I'm giving a lot of information, but if you're going to tie things up at the end of the seminar. So, if you go back to the book of Genesis, when earth was created, see, well, there was only the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit was hovering over the water, right? And this happened for millions of years. And they said, let's do something. Let's, let's create something. And God said, let there be light. And you can imagine, you know, everything's happening because God spoke. He gave the word. He said, let there be light. He commanded. And the light... You know, the light infiltrated and, and the creation started. And they would say, let's make man in our image and to our likeness. Right? To our image and our likeness. And they made man and he said to them, of every tree you may eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you may not eat. That day you will surely die. Now, everybody, you know, I was thinking about this. I'm reading up about this, about what the book, the knowledge of the good and evil. And if I make an assumption, if I understand this correctly, this was the law. When the law was introduced, death came. So all that God wanted to do is for us to walk with him in the spirit. God wanted us to not know the difference. You know, he came to Adam and he said, he, when at the cool, he wanted to walk with Adam. And after the fall happened, he said, Adam, where are you? He wasn't asking Adam, where are you? Because he knew where Adam was. But I think he was like, Adam, where are you? What's going on in your mind? Why did you do this? So Adam said it was Eve. And Eve said it was a snake. Right. So then you get Genesis 3 verse 15, which I love. And God says to the snake, this is called the line in the sand. You know the movies that you pull, you know, they, they pull the line in the, the sand. They say, you come over here. We're going to talk. This is now my space. This is yours. And he says to the snake, I will put enmity or I will put war between you, the snake, and the woman. Between your seed, the snake seed, and the woman. Now you will strike his heel, but he's going to crush your head. So the father, the creator, prophesied this. He said there's going to be war between good and evil between darkness and between light. So the Father prophesied this. So if you think you, you don't have an opportunity to, to fight against the works of the devil, you must be joking. Because God said that is going to happen. 
And I know the seed was, was Jesus, but Jesus is in us. And he also said the woman. He didn't say not only the seed, but the woman as well, which is mankind. Now, you can think since that day, since the fall happened, creation was cursed. Because thorns and thistles grew up and sin came in and death came up. And, you know, it's just a, a shame came in. It's, it, and I have a hard time to believe that, that that sickness was a part of God's plan in the Garden of Eden. I have a hard, I have a hard time to believe that. Because sickness was brought in by the fall of man. Because we live in a broken world. We have it. But we are children of God. So what do we do with that? We just leave it and say, God is working on my character. Just, you know, I'm going to carry this. It doesn't work like that. All throughout the Bible, you read, God heals our diseases. Psalm 103 verse 3 says, Forgives all our iniquities and heals all our diseases. And that's Old Testament. That was before Jesus was there. Isaiah 53 verse 4 Surely he has borne our sorrows and carried our griefs, but we considered him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was slain for our sins. He was afflicted with our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his wounds we are healed. Now I have loads of examples of this in the New Testament, but if you go to 1 John 3 verse 8, it says, For this purpose the Son of God appeared that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's cool. Because Jesus didn't only come to die for sin, right? People will say, this is just a, you know, it's not really, it's not literally, it doesn't mean literally our, our sicknesses, it means our peace. But if, if Jesus only died for sin, there was no need for him to go through that sorrow and pain and, and all those things he went through on the cross. The soldiers could have gone and they could have killed him when he was a baby because his blood would have been enough. And that would cover the sins. But Jesus went through everything. You know, he was depressed. He was rejected. He was mocked. He was lonely. He was scared. So that we have to, don't have to go through that. You don't need to sit with depression. You don't need to sit with, with, with sickness or disease. Because he already paid for that. But Jesus grew up as a boy. And he had the same temptation as we have. But, but he didn't sin. So... What is scary is Jesus showed us how a normal Christian looks. That's scary. Jesus said, I'm the example. Take my example and imitate me. How many people do we see imitating Jesus? Most people out there are trying to stop it. To say, let's just sit. Let's just be comfortable. You know, this is too weird. Let's just, you know, we'll sit and we'll we'll be good Christians. But Jesus says, you know, pick up your cross. Follow me. If you want to follow Jesus, that's what you do. You pick up your cross. Now, Jesus cried on the cross. He said, it's finished. What was finished? Because Jesus wasn't resurrected yet. The day of Pentecost didn't happen yet. But the debt was paid. The last debt of sickness, disease, and all these things that we sit with today that we think we deserve. Jesus really died for that. Look, let me give you an example. Let's say I take out a loan of 200000 I take out this loan from a loan shop, and uh, I have a job. And then two months down the line, I can't pay it anymore. I've lost my job that is outstanding. And they say, well, we're going to, you know, we're going to take your car. And then we're going to take your TV, we're going to take your house, you know, we're going to break every bone in your body, and then we're going to put you in jail. And my father says, no, no. He says, I'll pay for it. So he goes and he sells everything he has. He sells his car, he sells his house. Because that's what happened. I mean, Jesus paid everything so that you can be free today. Not a free where we go, yeah, I'm free. It's like you can be free today of everything. This is what God paid for. Give Jesus what he paid for. He paid for it. It's like, I don't want half of things. I want everything. And Jesus paid for everything. I remember uh, a while ago, I I healed people on Skype as well. And um, there was this man, he's in Tanzania. 
and he had malaria pneumonia. Now you can understand this is, he's quite sick and he's in his bed. So I'm like, I'm going to pray for you now. And I start praying and we hear this wind coming up, but it's like a, it's, like, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a wind, it's a wind. And you hear this sound and I'm saying to him, is this on your side? He says, no, is it on your side? I say, no. And the wind blows over him and he's healed. The malaria, he wakes, he says, oh. he says, I've got no pain. My fever's gone. My lungs are clear. Now that's the power of God. The power of God is something amazing. So Matthew 10 verse 8, Jesus says, he, he, he says, go heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, freely you have received, now freely give. So Jesus gives this commission. Because all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. And as, as the Father sent him, he sends us to go do it. We are the representatives. But every commandment and every commission of Jesus is an invitation to a deeper relationship with him. Because he sent the disciples out knowing full well that they can't heal. It's impossible. How can you heal anybody? Because the, norm, the, the normal is driven by the paranormal. The natural is driven by the supernatural. So you can't go out and heal people. That'd be silly, man. You can't go heal anybody, but you've got Jesus, so you can heal. So it's not about the gifts. You know, people go, oh, you know, there is the gift of healing. To, and I can't. No, don't make excuses. Everybody can heal. Because who was the greatest healer? Jesus. Who lives in you? Jesus. So we don't need to have, look, I have the gift of healing because I can train people in healing. I think I'll make a horrible pastor, but I can still teach somebody something, you know. It, it's just about, it's about the ministry. This is the ministry, the gifts in ministry. So Jesus said to them, go out and go heal, knowing that they can't. But he wants a relationship with us. Right, everything without the Spirit of God is actually impossible. Even loving your neighbor, loving your enemy, that's impossible without the Spirit of God. Healing the sick, it's like we put things in boxes. We go, oh, this I can do. No, healing the sick, nah, no. This I can, yeah, I can, I can love my neighbor. I can't heal the sick, you know, and I can't, I can't love my enemy. But everything is possible if you have the, the gift of, oh, sorry, the gift, um, the Spirit of God. Okay, because you need to understand that God is so mighty, he can snap his fingers, and everybody will be healed. He can snap his fingers, and everybody will know the gospel. You know, he can snap his fingers, and, and, and he will appear to everybody in the world, but he doesn't, because he gives us that, that privilege of being his representative. That's why you go, you'll, you'll sometimes see, you know, I see these things on, on YouTube, and these, these um, people are trying to cast out demons, what they go, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name, it doesn't work like that. You need to have Jesus first. That's why he says, you will cast out demons in my name, but I'll tell you I don't know you. If you go to Acts 19, you'll read about the sons of Sceva. They didn't have him in their hearts. They didn't have God, but they were still trying to cast out demons, and then one said, I don't know you. You know, who are you? So God gives us this privilege. 1 Peter 4 verse 10 says, we are the stewards of the manifold grace and the glory of God. So we are little packages of Holy Spirit walking around and we heal and we love. That's what we're supposed to do. You know, the Jesus said, I believe, <laughs> if you think about when Jesus came to earth, he showed people how it is when Jesus is king. Because nobody was sick. He fed 5,000 with a couple of loaves and bread. You know, nobody died. He, if you want to live, you live forever. No one was depressed. He liberated the oppressed. He set the captives free. So that was Jesus. This is when G King Jesus reigns. You know, everybody's happy. So you can imagine this. Oh, let me tell you, last night... I, I get this, this call. Now, I've, I've, um, I've trained this um, African man. Um, he's from the Zion Church. But he's also now healing, and, you know, it's going good. 
and he's, uh, I get this call, prophet, prophet, and I'm thinking, hello, hello, but the phone keeps breaking up, and I, hello, hello, and I hear something about a child, and um, I had a stroke, and the one is like, and he says, but the face is now, it's like, she's twinkling her eye, and I, I said, tell the face to come right, I don't know, because <laughs> I can't really hear him, and I hear, you know what I <laughs> and I hear this, ah, oh, okay. He says, the face went up again. <laughs> so nothing is impossible. So I want you to imagine this. Jesus is now walking with his disciples. He's training them. He's teaching them. And um, he tells them to love people because his whole ministry is about love. And you get to Luke 9.49. They said, teacher, we saw man casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he did not come with us as your followers. And Jesus said, do not forbid him, who is not against you, is for you. So Jesus is thinking, I told you to love, you know, but okay, you guys go ahead. We'll, 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 we'll work on your character later. So Jesus sent messengers to Samaria to prepare for him, but they, they did not receive him. So James and John says they want to call fire down and jesus is thinking what are these guys doing i mean seriously the good thing is that that they actually thought it was possible <laughs> to call fire down from heaven because jesus was there that's just how awesome it was i think people the, people stupid came up when jesus was there because they just felt so at home with him you know he was just love he love and power come, came from him everywhere so now luke 10 jesus this is this now happened they eh? luke 10 Jesus sends out 70 more. So he sends out 70 more when people just wanted to call fire down. He says, go out in my name and make more disciples. Now watch this. This is now Luke 10 where he gives him authority. Luke 11, they say, Lord, we don't know how to pray. So these guys were raising the dead, healing the sick, doing all these things, but they didn't even know how to pray. How does that work? If you all know how to pray, you're overqualified. Right, so it's going to be easy. Okay, so Acts 3 verse 6. I'm going to shock you now. Now, uh, Simon Peter and John were coming out of the temple. Behold, a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried by men who were accustomed to bring him and lay him at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, so that I might ask alms from those who entered into the temple. And when he saw Simon, Peter, and John entering the temple, he begged of them to give him alms. And Simon, Peter, and John looked at him and said, look at us. Then Simon, Peter said to him, gold and silver have I none. But what I have, I give to you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the, by the right hand, lifted him up, and in that very hour his legs and his feet receive strength. So now everybody is, you know, this is very strange. And they're talking. And then Simon Peter says, Men of Israel, why are you wondering at this man? Why are you looking at us, though by his, our own power and authority we had made this man to walk? Oh, snap. Now Jesus, uh, Simon Peter is saying, What I have, I give to you. So is it Jesus? Or is it him? It's a tricky one. Is it Jesus? Because what I have, I give to you. Right? So we should all stop asking God to do something which he told us to do. God says, go out, go heal the sick. Go heal the sick. It's like, I tell my daughter, go clean your room. She'll go into a room and she'll say, Mommy, will you clean my room? No. I've asked you to do it. So go out and do it. I love the book of John. I mean, I love the Bible, but I love the book of John. Now, John 17, 21 says, I'm not asking on behalf of them alone, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I'm in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one, as we are one. And this is starting to make more sense, because now it's like, I have blue and I have yellow and I put them together, I have green. 
So I can't say, give me back my blue or give me back my yellow. It's green now. You can't separate it. This is, God is in us. We are in God. We are seated in heavenly thrones. You, you can't separate it. Now, Jesus wants you to walk in the same power as he walked in, right? So there's, in fact, in fact greater things we will do. But Luke 8, 43 says, As Jesus went with them, the crowds pressed around him, including women who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had spent all her money on physicians, but no one was able to heal her. She came up behind Jesus, touched the fringe of his cloak. Immediately her bleeding stopped. Now you can imagine this. Disciples, Jesus walking. You know, everybody's pushing. It's crazy. And then Jesus says, someone touched me. And they said, everybody's touching us. He said, I felt power go from me. And that's happened to me. I felt, I feel how power is, is going from me. The power of God. It's not me. Is it me? I don't know. But what I have, I give. I have the Holy Spirit. You know, we, 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 we pray um, the Lord's Prayer. We say, give us this day our daily bread. I don't believe it's literal bread. Because sometimes you can't heal somebody. I say, Jesus... You have something I don't have. Please give me that bread so that I can give it to my friend who needs the healing. So, Luke 6, verse 19, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Them all. Everybody was healed. Luke 9, verse 1, this is before they knew how to pray. <laughs> Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and pure power to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. You know, sometimes I, I can't get to somebody who's in Zimbabwe or something. I'll take one of my scarves and I'll send it and they'll be healed. Because it's what we ask for, what we ask God for, he will do for us. That's the faith. And unfortunately, Jesus didn't only call extroverts. If you're thinking, this is a bit weird, he didn't only call extroverts. He called introverts as well. And you don't have to be like me and, you know, take over the world, but, or try. <laughs> but, but you need to pick up your cross. You need to do this. And I'm telling you, the peace that you have when you do this is amazing. I've not have... Any stress, I don't have. I don't have anger. I don't have. I have joy all day, all day. I don't have any anything from the devil side because <laughs> I just all I think about is God. I meditate on Him all day. I, that's just yeah. That's my walk. So Jesus paid the same price for healing as He did for sin. If you go to, again to Isaiah fifty-three, verse four to five. Now He was despised and forsaken of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through our transgressions; He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening, the chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. So Jesus paid the same price for everything. He paid for disease. He paid for sin. He paid for rejection. He paid for depression. He paid for everything. It's paid in full. It's already paid. It's not like, you know, I understand that one day we will be in the unity of the faith and we will receive new bodies. Up and until that time, we need healing ministry. Unfortunately. So God gives us the authority to do this. Okay? To heal the sick. So it's the same blood. It's the same price. Give Jesus what he paid for. He paid for it. Now claim it. Matthew 13, verse 45 to 46. It says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. So, this was, imagine you're walking in a field just a, you know, a field outside, and you find, like, 
heap loads of diamonds and gold and everything. Put some sand on it and put some mud on it and you go to the owner and say, I'll buy this for you for eight million. You know, that's exactly what, what, what happened. And Jesus loves you so much that he, he gave up everything. He sold everything he had so that you can live today free. That's what it's, that's all it comes down to. Jesus paid for everything. The reward is so much greater than the cost of doing this. God will bless you. It's amazing. I, I, can't, even, I can't even describe to you what changes has happened in my life because I've obeyed God. I, I've had a lot of people tell me I'm crazy, you know, and I've lost a lot of friends. I've lost most friends, religious friends, but I made a lot, <laughs> a lot of new ones. But... Um, that's unfortunately my cross I need to carry. So we are the body of Christ. And what did the body of Christ do? He, what did Jesus do? He healed everybody. Every disease, every affliction. But it's not just for, for it's not just the healing, it's, it's the love. God loved everybody into the kingdom. It's not about the gift of healing. And it's not about what you know. You can say this, but you can... You know this Bible from front to back. And you can translate it in Zulu, Fali Galor, Afrikaans, English. It doesn't matter. It's about who you know in this Bible. And if you know the author of the Bible. And when you know him, things will, things will change for you. I want to, I want to pray for you. If you, you don't need to, to lift your hands. But I want to pray if you feel that you are far from God. And that you maybe don't have the Holy Spirit living in you. I want to pray for you. And then after that, we're going to do some healing. Okay, just Father, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for, for being here. I thank you for your presence. You're such an awesome God, and I, and I bless your name. I praise you, Father. And Father, you, you know everybody's heart, and I, I pray that if there is somebody who, who is longing for you, Lord, that, that you touch them with your Holy Spirit and that you, you show them how much you love you. And Father, this is all for you. This is all for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So who has pain anywhere? Who needs healing? Okay. Okay, so listen, this is not just physical healing. I'm talking about addiction. Um, if, you, if you're addicted, depressed, it doesn't really matter. If you can, I just want you to stand up. And if you can't stand up, in the name of Jesus, stand up. <laughs> okay. So what I... Sure, you guys knew there was a healing meeting, eh? So what I want you to do is... I will pray for those who want me to pray. But you can look... Yo, we are. <laughs> Moth, you also need healing. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. So um, I want you to, to just not pray for your mother or your sister or your daughter. Pray. Go pray for somebody that you don't know. Or that's not your best friend because otherwise it's awkward. So just mix up and find somebody else. Because everybody seems to be sick. Okay, so what I want you to do is ask the person their name. If you don't know their name, ask their name. Okay? And then um, if it's appropriate to put your hand on where the pain is or the sickness is, you put your hand on there. All right? And then it does, it's not about what you say. It's not a formula. This is Jesus in action. Holy Spirit, thank you. You are welcome here. 
Okay, so I want you to pray with me. You say, Father, thank you that you love the name. I don't know who you, you, you're praying with. Thank you that you love them so much, Father. Father, thank you for your healing hand. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Back heal, arms heal, whatever that problem is, you speak to that problem. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. You command it to you. You don't ask for it, you command it. Be healed right in the name of Jesus. Addiction go, depression go, sickness go, cancer go, AIDS go, blindness go, deafness go. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Blood receive life. Limbs receive life. In Jesus' name. There we go. So now I want you to do, I want you to test out where the pain was. And come, if you have a testimony, come to the front. You will start the Hey? Do you want? You know, everybody, you know, if you can't, if it doesn't work the first time, if it's stubborn, you pray again, and you pray again, and you pray again. 